The man unzips his girlfriend's chest and tells her to seduce the cable car attendant because the three of them want to ski but can't afford the tickets. With such a stingy boyfriend, Jenny was speechless too, but at least she still had a few good looks. So it was good to not use them for nothing. She shamelessly walked to the administrator in front of the first cigarette, pretending to be close to the fat brother. Said he wanted to ski but the ticket price was not cheap. If the big brother could quietly give a convenience, he brought to beautiful girlfriends after the completion of the matter. Must give the big brother back to a wave of benefits. Single for nearly 40 years, the fat brother agreed. After a while, to see Jenny with the men, the fat brother that was fooled is a face of blindness. Only to see three people quickly on the cable car. Letty regretted it was too late. I didn't expect them to come back at night. These three people are shameless. Fat brother said he was almost off duty blocking not to let in. Mike threatened him not to let in to report his private abuse of power during the day. So fat brother hold very angry. Three people do not know that this will become their life to make the most regrettable decision. Fat brother off duty to tell colleagues above there are three people. Wait for them to come down to close the door. Who knows just as three guys slipped down. Colleagues thought no one above. Immediately pull off the electric switch off work to go. At this time three people were hanging in midair. With the lights on the mountain one by one. They had a sense of foreboding. So began to shout for help. Shouted for a long time. Around still a dead silence. It seemed that they had been forgotten. To add to their despair. It was now Friday night and the place was closed on weekends. Meaning they would be stuck there for three days and three nights. Mike was about to pee his pants just thinking about it, and went straight to the bathroom on the gondola, so then fell from the sky, adding insult to injury for the three men who were already freezing. Suddenly, there was a bright light from below, a snow plow, a few of the men threw their helmets and sleds downward, to try to get each other's attention, but the storm got worse and worse, and the crew couldn't even notice, and just drove the vehicle away, as the temperature gets colder and colder and Jenny's face develops frostbite. Her boyfriend decides to take a chance, and jump off the gondola, but he underestimates the height. The man leapt from a 30 meter tall high cable car. Both of his caps were separated from his thighs, and he fell to the ground in pain and couldn't move a bit. Jenny took off her scarf to stop her boyfriend's bleeding, but the wind blew him into a tree. At that moment, the man looked up. But fortunately, Jenny threw down her skis in time, and the wolf was scared away, but none of them thought that this action would attract more bad wolves. Hearing the howling of the wolves not far away, the man knew he was finished. Hearing her boyfriend's screams, Jenny cried her heart out. In a few seconds, the boyfriend was gnawed and there was not even a crumb left. Jenny looked at the shoes left on the ground and began to blame Mike. He's your best brother, why didn't you stop him just now? Letting him fight to his death to risk his life, Mike felt puzzled. He didn't want to take the responsibility. He's your boyfriend, didn't you stop him just the same? A grief-stricken Jenny burst into tears again. The snow fell harder and harder. The temperature dropped lower and lower, and the two people's bodies were frouncing stiff. They could only lean against each other for warmth, and then fell into a deep sleep in this freezing weather. The girl woke up with a start to find her hand frouncing to the bars of the cable car. No longer feeling it, she yanked so hard that the entire skin of her hand was torn off, but she couldn't feel the slightest pain. The frostbite on her face began to itch, and just as she tried to scratch it with her hand, she was stopped by Mike. Jenny couldn't help but shed tears when she recalled the tragic death of her boyfriend last night, coupled with the constant ravages of starvation and the bitter cold. Reaching out to wipe them away, the frostbitten skin was rubbed to create an even larger patch of cuts. Mike didn't want to wait any longer. He saw a post not far away. Maybe he could climb down the rope and slide down the post. He moved his stiff body and didn't take two steps before the hungry wolves reappeared below, staring down at the fat piece of meat above him. Mike climbed up to the other gondola, his hands already bloodied from the friction. Jenny throws a handful of ski sticks on the ground as he goes down to avoid a fight with the hungry wolf, then moves on. Finally, he climbs the pole and goes down the ladder. As soon as he picks up his ski stick, the hungry wolf rushes up and bites Mike, who uses the stick to fight off the wolf who then runs off to call for his companions, and immediately puts on his skis and speeds off, with two more wolves in hot pursuit. That night, Jenny waited alone on the snowy mountain until dawn, but there was no sign of Mike. She was so upset that she started to wriggle on the cable car. At this time, the steel spike suddenly loosened. And the height dropped a lot. The girl summoned up the courage to jump to the ground and landed safely. But the next second, the cable car smashed heavily on Jenny's calf, causing a powder fracture. With her leg smashed, she could only rely on the strength of her hands to climb down the mountain bit by bit. When she got halfway down the mountain, she saw the blood left in the snow. Mike had indeed had an accident. As soon as she looked up, she saw the vicious wolf. 
its mouth covered with blood. Probably it had just not mic to death and was already full. So it didn't attack Jenny and turned away. In the end, Jenny rolled and fell to the bottom of the mountain and was found by a staff member who managed to save her.